Welcome to Tales from the Flip Side. This is our modern book playbook roundtable where we have another session of Digging In with Dollar. Yep. Yeah. So let's go, go ahead and introduce all the people in this discussion today. We, um, we'll start off with Nico. What's going on? Really excited to be here. It's been too long and uh, can't wait to talk all about Loki. Uh, some of the other cool stuff Dollar's got planned. Super excited. Steve? Also, we're we don't we're not yeah. waterboarding anyone. The screams and yells that you heard they did not come from my home. That was a different home where someone is not being waterboarded. Yeah, Sorry. I think I just saw a tail go across the screen, so yeah. it could could be attributed to that. Yeah. Uh, it's not actually a, a sports game going, going on in the background. So my <laughs> uncle's in town watching baseball. <laughs> hey guys, Rich Taylor, Dollar Ben, nice yeah. seeing you. Thanks for joining us. And I'm Aaron, and I'm trying not to water too, waterboard too many people in the background, but, you know, that's how it goes when you're watching the Astros, right? All right, so let's go ahead and get started in with Digging In With Dollar. I'm going to let you go for it, man. So we have another episode of Digging In With Dollar. You guys have all been watching Loki. Um, there are going to be some spoilers so I'm just going to warn you now, spoilers ahead. If you have not seen the first episode and especially the second episode, turn it off now for the next five to seven minutes and then you can turn it back on. Uh, so we got Loki and here we have the big spoiler, the big reveal at the end of Loki episode two. Um, where we actually see the Loki variant for the first time in which... She's wearing the traditional uh, as Asgardian um, uh, warrior outfit that Loki wears with the with the horns. Of course, her horns are a little smaller and the same colors or whatnot. Um, and you know, there's the picture of Loki from episode one. Um, and we move on to the next slide. Oh, but before we do that, did anyone oh, okay. else notice on the episode that one of her horns was broken? Yes. Okay. I did not notice that. I actually thought her hair was covering it up. So good eye, Aaron. Good eye, Aaron. Um, yeah, so um, our first our first thought is, hey, that's Lady Loki. So let's go into who it also could have been. Um, and, you know, most of the community and market has shown that a lot of people are hedging their bets that it could be an iteration of the MCU's iteration of Enchantress, uh, especially, especially Enchant Enchantress 2, the second Enchantress, uh, Sylvia, I'm sorry, Sylvie Lush Lushchen. And um, her first appearance is in the Young Avengers 1, the Dark Reign iteration. So it's the uh, Dark Reign Young Avengers 1 uh, miniseries, 1 through 5. Her first full appearance would be in this issue one. Now I bring up these two panels to show you guys. Um, that's her in the middle panel with her fingers on her temples. And she's, she's a good guy. She's a good guy in this, in this, uh, I guess you can say um, this dark rain, young Avengers story arc, so to speak. Um, this book literally was a dollar bin book. And then after this episode is literally exploded. I mean, I've seen, I've seen uh, confirmed sales between $75 to $100 of this book. Now, here is your first appearance of Loki as a female or Lady Loki. We'll say Loki as, as, as a woman. Um, this is Thor Annual 18 that has recently got some heat because of the Loki series. Also because of the Loki variant that's causing all the drama being a, a woman and a lot of people hedging their bets thinking that is actually a version of Loki as a woman. But as you can see here where she changes to a woman for the first time, there's three panels. Um, after she turns into a dragon, she turns into a woman. She's got blue and silver hair into black and blue silver hair um, looks nothing like the uh, woman that we see at the end of the Loki episode two, but this is still a good book. I mean, there are plenty of them out there. Um, this book came polybagged. It has a card in it. 
it's square bound. I think it's a great book to have in your collection anyways. Here are the markets choices of uh, the first Lady Loki or Loki as a woman. You got your Thor number five cover A, um, your J. Scott Campbell variant, and then the Loki agent of Asgard, which basically gives us our next slide that is the the quote unquote Lady Loki or female Loki that we're used to um, in the top here. And they look similar in, in the clothes, but nothing alike. So a couple things. One is why does the MCU cast a Sylvie Lushton if they're not going to, or Enchantress number two, if they're not going to use that character? Second is we find out the majority, I'd say, um, Nika would know this better than me, but I'd say nine out of 10 of the foreign um, uh, streamers that um, that are holding Disney Plus and showing Loki in the credits, they have they have this, this uh, I think her name is Sophie D. Um, I, I don't know her name right offhand. She's an Italian actor, um, a woman actor, and they have her listed as Sylvie. So right there to me is a leak and a dead giveaway. But on the other hand, I don't believe the MCU makes mistakes. So for my money, I'm putting my money behind that character, that variant that is causing all the trouble as being the in, being Enchantress, the second Enchantress, Sylvie Lushton. Now, it doesn't mean we're not going to see Lady Loki in the future. And we were just talking about this. I, I do believe that we still will see a non-binary uh, or uh, I guess you could say a woman iteration of Loki possibly battle this character um, in the future or in, in season two. But as of right now, I believe this, this, this variant that's causing all these problems is Enchantress 2, Sylvie Lushton. What do you guys think? All right. So, um, my understanding is that um, when you hone in on the case file that uh, Tom Hiddleston's uh, Loki examines, that it shows the name uh, of Sylvie on the, the case file as well. So it appears actually in the episode proper, not just in the uh, credits. Um, but uh, what I also hear from, you know, kind of like the insiders that I trust, um, namely uh, Charlie from Emergency Awesome, is that this Sylvie character is sort of a composite of uh, Eichel, um, the second Enchantress, and uh, that basically she is a Lady Loki, you know, with those kinds of features. This is their attempt at a, a non-binary uh, sort of like iteration of Loki, um, that it won't necessarily fit squarely within uh, one of those comic iterations, but that it will, you know, fit sort of squarely within them all, right? Like they're doing the uh, Loki Agents of Asgard story where, you know, they go and try to correct the uh, timelines with uh, the vote Loki um, iteration of Loki causing all kinds of trouble and, and that it's really a redemption arc um, for Hiddleston's character, uh, you know, uh, spearheaded by uh, this um, female uh, blonde, I can't remember her dang name. Um, Sylvie Lushton. I, I was looking for the actress's name. Oh, but so, uh, uh, Sof Sophie de... Uh... Yeah, that one that, you know, she'll basically just kind of like guide him through. I, I think it's all sort of uh, awesome. And, um, you know... One thing I know for sure is uh, I've, I'm, I only regret the books I don't buy, uh, not the ones I do. Um, I'll make a lot of mistakes. Uh, I've got a lot of these books already. I'll be looking for them in, in uh, back issue bins and dollar bins from now and um, really looking forward to a second season. Super interested to see if uh, all of these iterations kind of stick around and, and we'll talk obviously a little bit more about some of the other stuff because I know you've got some other cool slides prepared, but... Uh, that's my sort of take on it. And now uh, for our, our audience, just to retouch on um, the Easter egg that Nika was talking about 
um, with the files. It's, it's, he's talking about basically when Loki is going through the files and it talks about the destruction of Asgard. Remember, the Loki that is in the show is not the Loki that was killed by Thanos in Infinity War. It's the actual Loki that got away during Endgame during the 2012 timeline when the Hulk busted through the elevator or the walls or whatever and the tesseract flew on the ground loki grabbed the tesseract and disappeared that's the loki that is in the show so he is unaware that asgard asgard was um was was destroyed during ragnarok now if you look close and you and you go slow with your your uh your remote or whatever you will see this character's name in her her actual full name in one of those uh, shots. That's what Nico's talking about. So yeah, I think that's a I think that's a great point you bring up, Nico. Let's move on to the next. So up and coming, we have uh, two. Uh, I guess you could say modern comic books. Foc our Wednesday Warriors. Uh, we have our infamous Donny Cates. He will be writing Incredible Hulk or Immortal Hulk. I guess he's just calling it Hulk, to my knowledge. Um, basically, uh, Al Ewing is done writing Immortal Hulk as of, I mean, as far as I can tell. And um, it's funny, we were on a phone call. It was me, Nico, and Steve from My Bargain Comics. And we were talking about, you know, how how well Kate's writes and what he's good at and what we think that, you know, he could make a Hulk story, uh, which way it could go, so to speak. And um, here you go. Here's a uh, great slide, Aaron. Great slide. Here's a... Uh, Really nice cover, we believe that could be the number one Donny Cates uh, cover A. And uh, one of us mentioned, I believe it was Nico, that mentioned that Donny Cates was really, really good at writing father son stories. And the last, um, I guess you can say, story arc that he 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 wrote is is epic the the Venom story arc from two thousand eighteen to um you know venom number 200 that just um dropped which is actually 35 35 issues he wrote and the key character i would say the 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 co-star of of the run is dylan brock as you can see is um we have the two cover cover a's um we have Venom 7, which is a very strong cameo, first appearance in cameo of Dylan Brock. And then you have your, obviously, you guys know the first full appearance of Dylan Brock in uh, Venom number nine. And the whole love and, and bonding between Eddie Brock and Dylan Brock and the symbiote Venom and Sleeper, um, it, it, the way Kate's made it come together, it, it just, it, I don't know. It just, it kept me intrigued for the entire story arc. And I, and I thought it was pretty cool. And now Dylan is a big player going forward as a next gen character in Marvel comic books. I also wanted to say, I thought it was really interesting that Al Ewing is going to start writing Venom. Oh yeah. That's a good point to bring up Aaron. So here we have, Incredible Hulk number 267, and I believe the more important book, Incredible Hulk number 312. Now, what do these books have to do with Dylan Brock, Eddie Brock, Venom, Donny Cates, you know, this new Incredible Hulk? I'll tell you. So in 267, you have Incredible Hulk 267. You have the first appearance in Cameo, but it's during a, a dream sequence. It's not main story. I know there's some finicky collectors out there. I'm one of them that want first appearances in main story. But, you know, the market has recognized that 267 is the first cameo appearance of Brian Banner, who is the father of Bruce Ban uh, Banner, the Incredible Hulk. 312 is your first full appearance of Brian Banner, the Hulk or Bruce Banner's father. We believe that these books collectively could see a little bump in the future. Um, there are Canadian price variants 
Mark Jewelers variant, um, insert edition variants for both of these books. And um, Nico can uh, detest to this. These books are in dollar bins everywhere. So I, I, I literally unknowingly, uh, I had no concept of, of like what you were going to talk about tonight or that you were going to be like, hey, let's jump on and, and record. Uh, snagged two copies of 267 for two bucks a piece today. Or not 267, 312, the black one. I got the 267 today. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Both good books. Both good books. So, yeah, I, I, I just really, you know, if I, I would have known about 267, I might have been able to grab one of those. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of, you know, it's like a, it's what, like a 50 issue different gap in between, too. That's not common. But, uh, I, I love know. the cover for 312. Oh, that, that's oh. just a great cover. I think they're both great covers, personally. Yeah. Um, 312 is a great cover as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I, like I was saying, um, the way that, you know, because remember when we went into the Venom, um, Kate's Venom run, Eddie Brock was Dylan's brother at the beginning. And then, you know, uh, as the issues went on, they, you know, he became, he was the father. He let Dylan know, blah, 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 blah. And uh, I just think that whole story between the Venom symbiote, um, Dylan, um, Eddie, um, and a Sleeper was just, I don't know. It, it, I mean, even without Null and, and Codex and all these other absurd characters, I think that was really the meat and potatoes of the story. And, and I really think that, you know, at, at a point in time we're in right now, we don't really know a lot about Bruce Banner family or his father besides the fact that you know unless you're reading these books or you've watched the first hulk with um uh what's his name eric uh i don't know but the first Banner, hulk, eric banna eric, eric banna and his father i believe is nick nolte in the, in that movie and uh you know to me I, that movie was cool but it wasn't done very well i would like to hear a little bit more about um bruce and brian and the origin behind that and to see brian become a player in the uh upcoming kate storyline if not if it doesn't happen so well uh, oh well but you know you can't beat the cost of these books at this time yeah now can you guys help me i thought that um in the immortal hulk run that bruce banner's uh father combined with um rick jones or or something to help me out with that no um well let's see yeah i, I think that he infect rick and then he infected bruce i i can't, I can't remember it, it's funny i just read the entire run just last weekend but because i'm old uh i don't remember <laughs> but i i you know th they definitely have um added more to the relationship uh the relationship uh there was a mortal hulk number zero issue two which focused on it I, I wouldn't be surprised i mean since ewing is doing kate's book and kate's is doing ewing's book if there wasn't some collaboration between the two and there's a lot there, there's a lot to build on um with both uh, and i have to admit i, I haven't read very much kate's that may be a good thing. Um, I have had the recent experience of reading crossover and being not that crossover is bad. It's just, you know, obviously it didn't live up. It hasn't lived up to the hype. So, uh, but that also touches upon, you know, Kate's love of combining and mashing up things and, you know, a crossover, right? I mean, from the Venom run, I, I admittedly haven't read the Venom run, but I mean, it's touched on everything from from uh, either directly or speculatively, everything from Micronauts to, uh, you know, lots of crazy, uh, just random uh, pulls from, you know, Marvel history. So uh, just like Crossover does this random these random pulls from uh, what, what, what is it? The throwaways? Is that the, the, the also guy country? 
Yeah, and God, and God Country. So, yeah, but um, don't forget about the Cosmic Ghost Rider. I mean, the other direction, yeah. or maybe it's not even a different direction. Maybe it's like the other like uh, recurring sort of uh, you know theme uh, for Kate's writing is cosmic stuff. I, I think that uh, Josh Allen uh, with the Modern Playbook guys uh, has done a pretty good job of covering the key books there. Um, but I, I think we all agree that one thing Donnie Cates does better than anybody in comics is make books pop. Uh, so there's going to be all kinds of winners. Um, these are two that I think are, are no brainers. I'm glad you took the time to kind of dissect them. Well, let me touch back on the, on the, um, Brian Banner, um, situation in, in Mortal Hulk. So he returned and I think it was in a Mortal Hulk issue eight or nine as um, the ghost that possessed uh, Sasquatch and put uh, Sasquatch on a rampage. And then, you know, um, in which Hulk, you know, Mortal Hulk had to, you know, put an end to that by uh, draining the, uh, the gamma energy radiation out of him but then later it was revealed that brian banner's ghost was actually being instructed and driven by the one below all right. in um issue number I, I believe it was 12 on that okay. one so, yeah so he did play play a part in ewing's run and i believe that he's going to possibly play a part in kate's run i i mean personally i thought it was it was genius um, from a creator's point of view, um, as Ewing doing that, from a reader's point of view of thinking a creator could actually retcon that and, and bring it to, but I just didn't think it lasted long enough. It only lasted like three issues. So I think that if Kate can get into this, retcon it somehow, and I just think it could be something wonderful. So, you know, I, I, I love Immortal Hulk. Unfortunately, I haven't finished yet, but, uh, I'm going to finish it, and I can't wait to get these books in the mail as as cheap as I got them. Nice. Once again, I thank you for um, digging in with Dollar. Um, not much speculation; just wanted to give you some some books and something to think about to uh, put your money behind. Because I know, uh, you know, times right now we don't have a lot of money, so these Dollar Bin books. Hopefully, you can get them before they. Uh, do well so yeah this is what becoming one of my favorite segments for the round table discussion digging in with dollars so. digging in with dollars yeah all right but you know we all always used to see you know dealer flip side on uh, on uh, the round table but it has now become its own show on wednesday nights so if you'd like to be a contestant on dealer flip side hit up any of us to be on on the show you know we'd love to see you and get you know community participation in this so i think we're going to try to do one live one with the community once a month right is that what um, you're saying so we're actually going to start doing uh two guests per week so we had one last week which was ninth wonder and uh i'm confirming with samson who we who we who we will have this coming up week. oh yeah okay we'll, we'll yep. save it for a surprise okay good good yep all right, so I think uh, some of us had some pickups that we want to, you know, just kind of show off. Uh, who wants to go first? We'll let Steve go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, I've got a pile here. So nice. I already showed the 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 whole two sixty seven. You know, we beat that beat that horse to death. Um, here's one. I think we. I it's been on the spec ten, or I at least nominated it. Um, I'll say this is an early appearance of Arkillo. Um, so I know there's been a lot of attention to Arkillo, and it's a newsstand. So pick that up today. Steve, you uh, maybe um, gratuitously, but hopefully uh, <laughs> still offered uh, to maybe sometime here in the near future uh, go and do a little deeper dive on Green Lantern. I, I uh, mentioned to you that I'm not uh good at it and you're like don't worry i can teach you yes so, exactly yeah we, right. we, we can we can go through those so yeah let's let's we'll, we'll we don't do have to do that now but whatever digging, digging with steve right all right word 
Uh, you know, Nova won. These are these are getting hot, so pick those up. Um, Red Hood Joe uh, confirmed the second print actually does exist. Oh, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, which yeah. I've never I'd never seen until he showed. Yeah, it I've never seen like, it right. either. I've never seen that one. I did see a Champions One second print today. I nice. I was tempted to pick it up, but how much? Fifty dollars. Oh. And I'm just like, yeah. I was just Yeesh. like, you know, I'm El Cheapo, so I hear that. Here's um, uh, just an interesting cover. I know the Sin, one of the Sin covers for wow. Fear itself. Um, but this is a one shot for Sin. I, I thought that was pretty cool. Oh yeah, it's dark as hell. I like it. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Uh, Fear itself one. I think this is what the first um, Thor's uh, uncle or grandfather, something like that. Hmm. Um, I, I I I just started reading uh, Hickman's run of Fantastic Four, so I've been picking these up. The first Council of Reads. I, I, it's such a good book. I, I mean, it, I can't remember the last time I read Fantastic Four. I mean probably since I was a kid and what an accomplishment it is to make the fantastic four interesting to read. It, it reminds me of what um, Jurgens did when he returned to Superman in rebirth before Bendis took it over, you know, like making Superman comics, like you want to read them and they're, they're good to read and interesting to read. It's very challenging. Um, and so props to Hickman on, on Fantastic Four. Hey, Steve, can we talk a little bit about um, that, the Council of Reeds? So uh, yeah. for those who are unaware, uh, it is essentially the concept that Dan Harmon uses with Rick and Morty, right? With all of the <laughs> Ricks all across <laughs> the multiverse? Sure. For for every time you you make a, a reference, I I don't, I mean, of course, I've heard of Rick and Morty. I have to be honest, I've never watched Rick and Morty. All so right, I'll it's really fucking good. It. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I love the show. You know, and it's premiering uh, Sunday, so season all five. Right. Well, all right. So uh, the long story short, um, I'm gonna I can't wait for young people to uh, sort of like see them do the council of reads on like a fantastic four tv show and they're gonna be like they fucking stole that from rick and morty <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be hilarious yeah but it's exceptional and i love that book there's a super rare variant that um you showed me that uh i i am like tempted oh, right yeah to the, pay there market are quite for. a few oh, yeah there, there's a, quite a few of uh, 570 there's at least two variants i i want to say there's like a Second printing, maybe. Yeah, yeah, isn't there so. like a one in a hundred and fifty or or something so, goofy? Yeah, yeah. There's some. There's something. And, and for a rando FF book, like right. Good luck. Right. Yeah. Like who, exactly. who got? There were like four of those that my comic shop got. Like Lone <laughs> Star got two. Who orders that many Fantastic Four? So I don't know. I'm wow. interested though. I like it. Good yeah. pick. So, I had the honor of having jury duty. This week, I think it was, I want to say Tuesday. I happened to go to the library the day before, so I picked up some graphic novels to read, which turned out to be Thank a fantastic you. idea. If you ever have jury duty, I mean, of course, I could have bring, brought the iPad, but, um, you know, th then I'd have to worry about it getting, getting it stolen and all that. So, um, so I got some graphic novels from the library. One of the graphic novels I picked up was uh, Black Panther uh, Volume 1 by um christopher priest and so i read that and um i was really uh taken by uh, i believe it's a kibi who's the villain of the the first arc i basically while while um t'challa is in the united states a kibi do does a takeover of wakanda uh very very interesting he's very crazy uh, and his first appearance, he's first mentioned in issue two, but his first appearance is number three. So thinking, oh, all right, this is a cheap buy. Nice. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm, I'm hesitating to mention this one. 
but what the heck? I'll do it because it's DC, and no one, no, no one will actually act on any DC spec. Um, I might. So this is Justice League oh. of America 140. I know this about is this the one. first Manhunters. Uh, if you were watching Tales from the flip side about two, three months ago, we had a guest who's very connected in Hollywood, and he dropped that the Manhunters were the villain for the Grand Green Lantern HBO show. Um, so I've been buying these when I pick them up. I probably should be buying them more, but it's DC, so I'm a little bit tentative. <laughs> So um, let's see what else. Um, Age of Ultron, book ten, right? We've got oh, nice. first cameo, right? Angela, oh, early appearance of Angela, right? So I don't think we can go wrong there in the Marvel universe, right? You thank you, yes, definitely. Early appearance of Angela in the Marvel universe. Uh, I love promo comics. Um, you know this. This is. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy. This was included with the Hasbro toy. Uh, not really worth anything. No significance. It's just cool to be able to pick up without paying for the toy. For real. Um, speaking of DC spec that no one cares about until they do, I keep buying this. Aquaman 7. This is the, this is the first cover appearance of the others uh i gotta think of the sequel they'll try to pull the these guys in even if it's like an end credits scene uh to try to expand the universe i mean there's just not that much to play with in the aquaman sandbox at least in my in my view um they all appear on the cover i recently <laughs> reread uh, I'm, I'm willing to admit this on camera. I reread the the Aquaman Johns run, and not all of the others actually appear in this issue. So you may even, if you really like me, if you're at least in the short term a sucker for uh, the others and Aquaman spec, you may want to pick up issue eight. I think it, that has one of the first appearances of the others. Uh, speaking about of promo comics. Um, I saw an Into the Badlands for a buck. I, nice. I couldn't help but pick it up. I keep picking these up too, even though there's really, I don't think, any significance. Ironheart too. I just tend to find them. And for a buck, why That's not? Cool cover too. Yeah. Oh, yeah it is. Uh, this is Domino Hotshot second printing. So this is a team with Black Widow, White Fox. What is that? Atlas. Bear, Diamondback, Outlaw, and Domino. Um, nice. Meh, you know. I didn't know there was a second printing for that. Neither did I. Yeah. So for a buck, you know. Wanted, you know, I saw Mark Millar, and I, I, <laughs> and, you know, I understand there was what? A, a movie with, uh, who was in the movie? Angelina Jolie and uh, what's his face? Um, yes. So it's, a, it's been a decade, right? So it's time for wanted to come back around again. Or more. Yeah. It's been right. a long ass time. Yeah. So this one I I, I love. Um, so when I was researching promo comics, I came across this. This is the only um, second printing of Watchmen that exists. It's an official That's second awesome. printing. They released it in coordination with the movie in 2008. Uh, saw this in the dollar bin and was like, even oh, though yeah, I already yeah. have a copy, cool. I was like, I got to have awesome. another one. This yeah. is really, really cool. Yeah, I'll have I to think, find one for my brother. Yeah. Uh, I think I meant to put this back, but, uh, you know, I, as, as we do, right, when we're building stacks, some things get left in. I think this is some first in here, like Aunt May, something or other. I don't know. But uh, pick that up. Uh, this is the the reintroduction of uh, Carol Ferris as Star Sapphire. 
the 192 with her on the cover is probably more famous, but who knows what's going to happen with this Green Lantern uh, HBO show. So for a dollar, you, you can make those bets. Um, this wasn't in the dollar bin, but it was still very cheap. It was like $3. Invincible Returns, second printing. This is first Thrag. Oh, that's a smart book. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't even remember who put that on the prospect ten list. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it, I think it made it, didn't it? Or maybe yeah. not. I, don't know. I can't remember. Uh, I mean, it, at least in the top fifteen. So, I mean, but yeah, that's, I that's second prints a smart book. There yeah, can't be many of those. Exactly. Yeah. This promo book, I've been wanting to buy, but I've been like on eBay. It's just, it's just not worth it. People seem to want a premium. This is Avengers Assemble with. Captain Citrus. So I know this doesn't excite everyone, but it, it excites me. That's fucking funnier than hell. <laughs> uh, let's see. And then I'll do a couple more. I, um, I bought a collection and then a, uh, a company that I used to consult for uh, a friend of mine, he, he sold me his collection of mostly Spidey books. And he was he told his boss and the owner of the company that I was buying his collection. His boss brought in a tub of books. And uh, his boss just gave me the books. Uh, I had to buy the collection from my buddy. Whatever. The collection from my buddy um, included a whole run of Secret Wars. Well done. New standard uh, boot. There's an eight. Uh, that's not a newsstand uh, included. There weren't uh, many multiple copies, but there was multiple copies of uh, Web Web One newsstand. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. Uh, Buy one collection, got... get one free, right? You yeah, exactly. It, 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 and actually, when I was negotiating with him, you know, I, I was like, uh, how about th this price? You know, and he's like, how about this price? He's like, you know, you did get my boss's collection for free. So, I agreed to the higher price. Um, Peter Parker, ninety. Right? Nice. Early, early black costume. Uh, we've got a two ninety eight. Fuck we've yeah. Got a a two ninety nine. Bang, no bang. Who cares? His, well his boss's collection had a lot of multiple copies. Uh, it had a lot of multiple copies of. Uh, 2099 number one. This, these are just two of them. I think there were seven total. Um, there was also a bunch of Batman Adventures one and a bunch of X Men Adventures number one. But um, love it. Yeah, I don't have those handy, but yeah, those are just uh, some of the pickups uh, from uh, recently. It's it's been kind of crazy, um, but it it's fun. <laughs> Good stuff, man. Yeah, thanks. All right, so who's next? Aaron, that's you. Okay, I guess it's me. All yeah. right, so I want to give a shout out to Hive Comics. They uh, sent me this. I was like, I was like, um, I was on Drunken Chat the other night with uh, with James, and he's like, he's like, did you get that package in? I was like, yeah. I was like, what did I order from y'all? He's like, he's like, oh, I just sent y'all books. I was like, oh, okay. They're just great people. Or, yeah, I mean exactly. Yeah. So, Neat. yeah. So apparently they have you know um, a con a connection for foreign comics now. So this is that Star Wars. I, I don't remember what issue, but yeah, um, it was great hearing all the details on that. And then they also hooked me up with a uh, Basilic number one. Um, wow, that's gorgeous. Yeah. So I was like, I was like, oh, that's amazing. And I I had just picked up cover A like not too long ago. Uh, let's see. I was digging at a shop and I found, you know, I like to support our, our team with, uh, you know, Journey into the Mystery 624. This was only $3. So I was like, all right, why not? Is that the first decal or not? Uh, no, no, that, that's not that one. Okay, um, not that one. Okay. It, yeah, yeah. It's coming up though. So, okay. Uh, sorry. Didn't mean to spoil this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I saw this. Christ. Yeah, I saw this reprint for, uh, you know, crime and suspense stories. Uh, I was a, uh, I, my brother was like starting to, uh, he was about to start going into the pre-code horror and he was going to pick up one. And I was like, 
I was like, all right, well, I'm going to pick up this reprint, see if he has this or not. So I was like, uh, but he got out of comics and uh, back into magic cards. So I was like, all right, whatever. Uh, but, uh, you know, Steve did mention uh, Deckel. So I found this, uh, what is this, the one in 50 for Berserker number three? Or is it yeah, two? So. Three. It's beautiful, dude. Yeah, the shop had only had it for fifteen dollars, so I was like, kind of nice. like, no, wow. and then I picked, I picked it up on a on a Friday, and I was like, kind of like, I was like, this shop. What's this still doing here? Right. I was like, yeah, exactly. I was like, this shop gets a lot of foot traffic. Like, how is it still in in this box? But whatever, I'm not gonna play. Um, so I picked up these two decals. This is a Iron Fist number one, uh, mm -hmm. second print. So hell yeah, yeah. Uh, they were only with like four bucks cover price, so uh, but there's a shark, it makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, Ben, the Sir Long Short, was saying that we think that this is the call's first work. Uh, no we're not 100% sure yet. Um, hmm. I guess we'll keep on doing some research, but I will say this is some of his early work, and we do know that it's Marvel, so uh, I am actually sending one of these to Ben. So I found it for three twenty five, like Very both cool. copies. Yeah, and then I always liked that cover. Didn't know why. Never bought any. And uh, like I was like, is that a first appearance? I wish that was a first appearance. Blah, blah, blah. Now I know. Yeah, it, so, it may in fact be. Yeah, and then not in the traditional was, sense, but <laughs> yeah. And then he was telling us that he did more of these covers for the for Journey into the Mystery. So his, mm. uh, I guess his manager uh, got him like a Marvel contract or something like that. And then it, uh, like they kind of dropped out, so uh, hmm. so I picked up more, and I was oh, like, "Wow!" I was like, "These are only like three bucks." I need to find a six forty nine though. But wow, oh wait, nice. this is forty nine right here. It was just out of order. All right, and then I'm sure Dollar's gonna enjoy this. So I found this Guardians of the Galaxy. It's a newsstand. What? Yeah. Mm. So this is a I've cool never cover too. It looks like a eight. rose batch cover. Yeah, um, I don't know. Frank Cavilla, right? I said, mm -hmm. yeah, Frank Cavilla. So nice. yeah, yeah. So he, I was like, he did enjoy like, that cover. <laughs> yeah, so it's a yeah, Come it's on. a new stand copy. So I I had never seen this, and they only had it for a cover price. Wow. There's so uh, many newsstands that we haven't discovered. It's just crazy. We yeah. keep, at least for me, I keep wasting my time searching for a newsstand like NYX three or Inhumans number five, which is probably not available. And instead, I could be finding so much more, you know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I was like, I left at that shop like before, like a week ago, and I was like, kind of like, all right, I don't really care. And then I kept on running into that book at other shops, and I was like, ah, none of these are newsstands. Let me just go back to that other one see if they still have it. I like uh, your mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like. I'll give someone the opportunity to pick it up, but you know, it's, it was still there a week later. All right. So you, you see the Simpsons comic kind of cool, right? Whatever. Mm -hmm. This is the really cool part about it. If you pull the back cover out, it's a homage to X-Men 50. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. Very so, cool. Yeah. yeah so so is, I haven't, I, I haven't gone down the rabbit hole of uh, Simpsons flip comics. Uh -huh. Like uh, I'm doing now with the Marvel Comics Presents, but it's something I've been tempted to do. Yeah, uh, I, I want to get a copy of the um, the one where it's like comic book guy, the FF swipe. Oh yeah, because okay. it's like it's the expensive book. You know what I mean? Like I'd like to at least have that before I start buying all the trash. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> but I may I may just go in reverse order. I don't know. Yeah, I think yeah. I have that one somewhere around here. Yeah, is it still real expensive or? I don't think so. Uh, oh, I think it's like 60, 70 bucks is the last really? time I saw one. Yeah. Wow. Uh, on right. eBay. And so, yeah. Uh, yeah that's, that's the regular A of number one, right? Yeah. There's another one where it's like comic book guy, right? That, that yeah. That's the, the one guy. I'm talking about. Yeah. Huh. Th that's the one that's like 60, 70 bucks. I um, thought it was a lot more than that. I hope you're right, Aaron. Okay. Yeah. So I'd be checking eBay right now. All right. Yeah. Nico, Dollar, you want to go next? I'll go. I'll let Nico go last because I know he's got some big ones. All right. Well, I got I got a couple big ones too. Two of these I got, or three of these I got like over a month ago, but we haven't done this in so long. So I have right. So a couple uh, big ones. That's what she said. Yeah, that's what <laughs> she's never said that to me. Hey, <laughs> non-binary. That's what he said. Okay, <laughs> of course he said. 
Okay. I I really like the anniversary frames. So yeah. I got one. Yeah. Most of these I see are newsstands and it's for, I, I know, or at least I haven't noticed. I, I saw the direct. And I was like, Oh, that's cool. It's got Captain America and you got black Knight on there. So it's like, no, nice. Hey. Dollar bin book. Um, been, I'm actually reading this book right now. Uh, Silver Surfer 72. I have a few of them, but this is the latest one. I just got it. Uh, we don't have half price books here, but we have a half price bookstore here. I got it there. Um, this one actually is the first appearance of Nebula as a, um, what is it? Cybernetic or, you know, where she's not human. Closer to her movie version. Right here. Yeah. That's, that's, this is the first appearance right there. Nice. And no, yeah. nobody ever talks about this book. This book's like 50 cents. <laughs> um, been picking up these when I can. I went to Comics, Tunes, and Toys in Tustin. Shout out to the big to-do. Um, he's become a friend of mine. He's always taking care of me. Um, this is your uh, first sword master in story. And yeah. people say, oh, he's not on the cover. But actually, he kind of sort of is because you see this green right here. That's actually the... <sighs> the aftermath of his sword being swung. So, yeah. Um, I've been picking up these um, from wherever I found. I found these at, uh, at uh, my comic shop, just like second appearances of spider woman. You know, this is actually a Whitman. I can like, like uh, Aaron was saying, I can never, um, when I see something special with modern, and it's like a cheap book. I can never just satisfy for like the normal copy. I always have to see if there's a newsstand, if it's modern or if there's a variant, uh, you know, or if it's a, uh, you know, bronze, it, you know, if it's Whitman or, or Mark jewelers or Canadian, I don't know if you guys notice on the market, but these, um, these McFarlane iterations of Hulk have been going crazy. You've been noticing this, the, these, um, th I mean, this book, I mean, I think I saw this book in a nine, eight go for a ridiculous amount. It was like over 700, 600, $700, maybe wow. even close to 800. I checked the bids on it. I mean, I don't know. It could have went either way, but if they are legit and then I checked some other iterations of, uh, of the Hulk by McFarlane and I saw them going up as well. So I've been, I ran to the, uh, to uh comics tunes and toys and tustin and cleaned out his bin um i got the also the asm um this my second newsstand copy of the um lethal protector this is actually a lot harder than to find than you would think um let's see this is the uh champions outlawed but this is the second print I cool. fucking love that book for the cool. yeah. I think it's got the best Miss Marvel cover bar none. I think so too. And I, I pre-ordered six copies of these from a retailer I choose not to name that I'm upset at right now. And they sent all my books except this one. And oh, it really made on. me upset. Yeah, and it wasn't the first time they'd done that. And when you go to my account, it says um it says fulfilled so they didn't even partially refund it oh uh, that's, that's um, sad oh yeah i have two copies of myself and i you know like nico i was really upset that during foc they didn't even have the picture until afterwards right and they do that a lot for anticipation to think something big's happening and it happens probably you know something big probably happens with hidden art with what 15% of the time, Steve, maybe less than that, 10%. I think the last yeah. big one I remember was the Gunslinger spawn uh, last year. You remember they weren't showing yeah. the art, and then after oh, FOC, yeah. they showed it, and then the book was like 40 bucks. Right. The, the um, 306 one, great. Yeah, 306. The first, yeah. Um, this I got on Amazon, and it came in a real – it was packed beautifully. Um, nice. In a Gemini – and wasn't reused, uh, you, you know, your first Lady Deadpool. This is no. just the, re the regular cover. I was looking for the newsstand copies because you know how oh. many cool, cool variants there are for this, right? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, uh, I was watching Newbie, and he really likes Lady Deadpool, and so I, I, I didn't know in the book, so I said, oh, you know what, I'll pick up a copy. Um, I won't even mention who mentioned this book, but uh, I went ahead and picked up one of these. Was it you, Steve, that mentioned this? 
I don't think so. No. Okay. So it must've been the other guy. So <laughs> you, you know what I'm talking about. So um, yeah. So these, these trading card covers, I think they're pretty cool, you know, um, mm -hmm. and they're qualified. They're qualifiers. Steve, Steve told in that you that told me that. Yeah. yeah mo most of them are. Yeah. I've been, I've been keeping track of them. Yeah. Cool. Most of, most of the trading card variants are qualifiers. Here's my dad. He hits those, uh, uh, libraries and, um, and goodwill stores and brings me back these books. Uh, never even heard them. They're like silver golden age. Mikhail's Navy, 12 cent cover. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, every, everything's ducky, uh, Dell cover. They come in these bags. It's dope, dude. And then, um, this one I thought was cool because it's got like a horror movie kind of monster theme to it. Monster, funnier than ever. Monsters to laugh at, laugh with. By um, Stan Lee. Yeah, by Stan Lee. Um, another Dell book, uh, Four Horsemen of Apocalypse. And then um, got, cool. this, got this book actually a few months ago before the rush. And I got this on Amazon. This was... Uh, $375 and it was marked as brand new and it was from a it was from a bookstore so I was so scared. So I sent him a message and said to please pack it with whatever and it came out beautifully. Yes. Wow. It came out beautifully. It's direct. It's direct. I think I might have even shown you guys this backstage but I haven't Who shown our, our audience. Who fucking cares if it's direct or newsstand? Dude. Well done. <laughs> it's perfect. Yes. 375 is perfect and it's going to CGC um i got this one on amazon as well i got this one for what did i get this on amazon or did, new katie i can't remember but anyways um i got this one i know it's hard to see with my background sorry guys and then um it's got it, it looks really good except for the top's got a little right here so i'm is thinking the, it's gonna, is the marvel value stamp in there yeah it's in there Fuck and that yeah, was the, first, the first thing i looked for and um it's definitely complete. I, it should, after I clean it and stuff, it should come back as an, depending on how bad I'll get hit. Cause it's this, this little, uh, I don't know what you'd call that, that color breaking line right there. It's, it's about a quarter inch, maybe three eighths of an inch long. So it might be a two point hit on that. Um, I don't know about that. Uh, I, I think they might treat you better than that, buddy. I pre-ordered a bunch of these. And so I want to go ahead and show them off because that was a good one. I hit, I pre-ordered six of these. This, I was pretty stoked on that. Um, let's see. Uh, I bug bug got some more. Oh, so when you were talking about the Simpsons comic, that's why I brought this one up because I got another one of these. Yeah. It has the poster in it. Uh, nice. Here's the other, here's the other McFarlane. I got this one at J and J comics. Shout out to J and J Jeff, um, Santa Ana. Um, he my used, favorite comic when I was a little kid. It was I that one. It, okay, yeah. So this is the last time he does Hulk, right? Or is it the last time he does Hulk on an ASM run? Or is the or is the last ASM cover? One or the other. It's a great cover, and it's going to be tattooed on my body pretty soon. So <laughs> well, no shit. Good, nice. good choice, dude. That was my yeah. favorite comic when I was a little kid. Cosmic Spidey punches Hulk into space. So, um, yeah, that's basically, I, I got some more, but, um, I want to rebag them and board them before I show them. So yeah, that's about it. Nice. Sweet. Very nice. All right. We're at the, uh, the 55 minute mark. We don't need to, uh, see George's pickups. We can do that some other time. Wait, it's no, been... no, no. You show them what you told me today, what you got. No, no, you ain't getting away clean. Are you trying to save it for flip side on Monday? The flagship no. show. Show it real fast. Just give us a little taste. I, Just a all little right. taste. All right. Here's I'll, I'll, we'll do something that I won't show on flip side that I think is fucking super cool. And since we are legitimately the best fucking spec show, period, I'll show you guys some shit that's dirt cheap that you can make some money on right fucking now. Boom posters. Ooh. They're 20 bucks on eBay. If there's any left by the time this show drops and these three don't take them all, go buy them. They're fucking gorgeous. Are you kidding me? CGC grades these little posters. Wow. People are out of their fucking minds to leave these behind. Come oh, on now. These are amazing. 
Thank you. Go get them all. Buy them all. Don't leave any. I mean, do not leave. Dude, that Hulk one is dope. Ah, don't leave any. Oh, so, wow. So were these like Melee's for whom? Or did, did it just come in the in the magazine with it? No, they didn't come in the magazines. Those are the promotional posters that oh. Foom provided comic shops. Okay. Oh. That's All really right. cool. We'll be back with more cool shit. <laughs>